Okay, assuming you got about 6 out of 12 on the last section, the EA, Elementary Algebra section of the test, then you'll be able to go up to this section of the test, College Level Math section, which will determine if you need to take Math 93, the highest level developmental course, or if you can go ahead and go into uh, College Level Math courses such as Math 102 or Pre-Calculus and so on. So the first question here is actually uh, to simplify this quantity, the, square, the quantity square root of m minus the square root of p times quantity 3 square roots of m plus 5 square roots of p. And what we'll need to do is foil this together. In other words, take the first, the outer, then the uh, inner, and the last. In other words, distribute the square root of m through, then distribu distribute the minus square root of p through this set of parentheses and then combine like terms. I got this written up here. So here's the two uh, things that we need to multiply together. Uh, first thing we'll need to do is take this square root of m times this uh, 3 square roots of m. Well, 1 square root of m times 3 square root of m is 3. Square root of m times the square root of m is the square root of m squared, which is m. Now go to your outer. Take the square root of m times 5 square roots of p. Well, that's 1 times 5 is 5. Square root of m times the square root of p is square root of mp. Now distribute this minus square root of p through. So minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Square root of p times square root of m is square root of mp. Now the minus 1 square root of p times 5 square root of p. Minus 1 times 5 is minus 5. Square root of p times square root of p is the square root of p squared, which is uh, p. Now at this point, we get 3m. These are like terms. Five of these minus 3 of these is 2 of these. So 3m plus 2 square roots of mp minus 5p, and that's all the farther we can go with that one. On this one, we need to uh, get a common denominator on this, but what we could do is we cannot cross off this 5 with this 10 because we'd have to get a common denominator first. But this, on this part of this expression, we can simplify this 5 with this 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. Now at this point, we already have a common denominator of x minus 2. So the answer to this problem is a common denominator of x minus 2, and since we have that common denominator, we just have minus 1 minus 10, which is minus 11. So it would be minus 11 over x minus 2. On problem number 3 is a tough one. It's a trick one. So this is one that you uh, may miss, and you need to get about 7 of these right, and there's 20 questions. So it's uh, not too bad if you miss a couple of these. And uh, there's about four trig questions on there. That takes you down to about 16 algebra problems, of which you need to get about 7 right. Uh, the period of f of t equals sine of 3t over 2. Well, first of all, you need to know that in trig, the fundamental period of sine, cosine, uh, secant, and cosecant is 2 pi. The fundamental period of tangent and cotangent is just pi. Then to get the period, you take that value for this one, it's sine, it's 2 pi, you take that and you divide it by the coefficient right here, which is 3 halves. Well, 2 pi divided by 3 halves is the same as 2 pi times the reciprocal, 2 thirds, and 2 times 2 is 4, so it'd be 4 pi over 3, and that'd be the right answer to that one. Problem number 4 says get the equation of the line that goes parallel to minus 5x uh, minus 4y equals 10, and goes through this point, 7, negative 2. And I may say even, I think it says to get this equation in standard form, let's take a look at this. Uh, no, it just says what is the equation of the line parallel to this and goes through that point, that's it. The next one says get the uh, line in standard form. So let's go ahead and continue on with problem number four here. So parallel to this, if it's parallel to this, then it would have the same slope. To get the slope of this, we need to solve it for y so we can get the form y equals mx plus b. So to solve this for y, I'm going to add 4y to both sides, get a positive 4y over here, and subtract 10 from both sides. Get minus 5x minus 10 equals 4y. Then divide through both sides by 4, and I would get y equals, y equals here, minus 5 fourths x, and that would be minus 10 fourths. But here's the important thing, is that the slope is minus 5 fourths. So now if you have the slope and you have a point, I'll call the point x1, y1, we can use the point slope formula which says that uh, y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. If we can substitute uh, the slope, which is your m, and your x1, y, x1, y1 into here, we'll have the equation of the line. So let's do that. We get y equals 
m, which is negative 5 fourths times the quantity x minus x1, so that's 7, plus y1, well plus a negative 2 is the same as minus 2. Now you got to do a little bit with fractions here. You get y equals, take the minus 5 fourths through, you get minus 5 fourths x. Minus 5 fourths times a minus 7 is a plus 35 fourths. And then minus 2, I'm going to get a common denominator of this. Minus 2 is the same as minus 8 fourths. Combining those fractions, we get y equals negative 5 fourths x. And 35 fourths minus 8 fourths is 27 fourths. And uh, that's what I get on that one right there. Let me just double check it. I think we're good. Uh, yeah. So let's go on to problem number 5. Okay, problem number five says write an equation of a line in standard form that has slope of negative three and goes through the point one negative seven. So uh, let's go ahead and do that problem. Here we are at number five and it says uh, standard form slope is negative three and goes through this point one negative seven. So I'm going to use this exact same point slope formula again. Uh, the slope is negative three, so I get y equals negative three times x minus x1 is one plus y1, plus a negative 7 is minus 7. Now distribute that negative 3 through. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. And that gives me y equals negative 3x plus 3 minus 7. 3 minus 7 is negative 4, so I get y equals negative 3x minus 4. Now it's said to write it in standard form. Standard form is ax plus by equals c. In other words, I've got to get the x's to the other side. So if I take the x's to the other side, I would have 3x plus y equals negative 4. And that would be the equation that line in standard form. Number 6 says um, to graph f of x equals 1 plus tangent x. And what that's going to do, and again, you're not going to get this one unless you've had trig, but what this graph is, the tangent x function uh, looks like this. At uh, pi over 2, there's a vertical asymptote. And at negative pi over 2, there's a vertical asymptote. And the graph looks something like, like this. Now what this is going to do, let me graph that again here. And what this is going to do is this plus 1 is going to shift this graph up one unit. So now, instead of going through 0, 0, it goes through the point 0, 1. It still has a, uh, a two vertical asymptotes here. It actually repeats this over and over. That one I'm doing here is not part of the graph. That's just showing where it goes vertical, where the vertical asymptote is, and that's negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And it goes through this point zero, 0, 1. And I'll start off with problem number 7 on the next video.